When I was 12 years old, Christmas was like every other Christmas that had come before. My siblings and I came downstairs. We opened up our presents under the tree. Except for one thing was different. My father was, uh, was acting kind of strange. He was a little nervous. We were sitting around the Christmas table eating dinner, and he said, are you sure you guys have opened up all of the Christmas presents? You might want to check under, in, the, in the office. And so we got up from the Christmas table. We ran into the office, and what was set up there on the desk was something that changed my life forever. My father was and is still an early adopter, and, and he had purchased for us an IBM 286 computer with a 10 megabyte hard drive and dual five and a quarter floppies. It was, it was incredible. We were excited. We learned some basic DOS commands. We loaded in the first game that I ever played on a computer. It was called Barbarian, and it was incredible. I loved games like Digger, like Afterburner, but one game stood out and stands out from all of the rest. That game was called MechWarrior. MechWarrior was this incredible game where as a human pilot, you would strap yourself into a seat, into a large cockpit, and you would pilot what was called a battle mech, or mech for short. Battle mechs are incredible because they have interchangeable weapons, they have arms, they have legs, power systems, they ran on massive motors, boosters, and as you combated other mechs and won rounds and bouts, you could upgrade your mech and, and you could get better systems, better weapons, a bigger engine, upgrade your armor. Uh, Mech Warrior was the brainchild of a man by the name of Jordan Wiseman. Jordan Wiseman is kind of the god of mechs uh, and mech heads, as we call ourselves. In the 80s, he developed this, this idea as a board game initially and then developed it into a video game, a computer game specifically. He went on to sell his game to Microsoft, and, and Jordan... Uh, went on to develop other games with Microsoft, and I played all of these games in succession. It was amazing back then to play computer games because every time a new game came out, it was twice as good. Literally, the graphics were twice as good and impressive. I played MechWarrior 2, MechWarrior 3, MechWarrior 4. They were all incredible, and each time, literally, uh, was twice as good as the time before. Battle mechs... Uh, have kind of this cultural phenomenon in, uh, in Japan, particularly, there's a huge following of what they call mecha, or these giant super robots. Battle mechs uh, are also in our contemporary culture, of course. You've seen mechs in movies like Pacific Rim. Uh, you've seen, seen them in, of course, Transformers. Also, uh, one that comes to mind, Matrix 3 Revolutions, was, had some awesome mechs. Uh, Obviously, computer games have progressed since the 80s, and I still play games involving battle mechs. Uh, one of my favorites is this game called Hawken that I'm currently playing. There are other games, one MechWarrior Online. And to give you an idea of how popular these games are in our culture, Jordan Wiseman, who I introduced earlier, has developed a new game, and he's now working independently with his own studio called Hairbrain Schemes. And they developed a game called Battletech, which is coming out in spring of 2017. The exciting thing about Battletech is it's Jordan Wiseman, the god of mechs, again making a mech game. And the incredible thing is he kickstarted it, and his funding campaign had over 41,000 backers, including me, of course, and, and raised over $2.7 million before they had even started designing the game. I. Uh, I went to college, got a business degree, and started my own company in the heavy equipment construction industry. And as I would operate heavy equipment, I would think about and dream about battle mechs helping me with my work. I operated heavy equipment, it made sense, a battle mech could help me do a lot of the things that I was trying to accomplish. And as I thought about this, I realized that eventually with the right technology, battle mechs could become a real possibility. In a recent TEDx talk by Emily Wapnick, she helped me understand that I belong to this group of people or individuals called multipotentialites. It is an actual word. And Emily explained in her TEDx talk that a multipotentialite is someone who gets interested in lots of different things. I've done lots of things for work. I've been a real estate agent. I was a business owner. had a couple retail stores. I was a cowboy. I was a welder. 
Um, all, of these, all of these things interested me and, and still do. One, one interesting thing was that uh, after selling a business, I went back to college and got a degree in English and now teach English at a local community college. Uh, imagine, my wife, I think, suffers from PTSD because of, of all of the change. So I was thinking about uh, being a multi-potentialite, being a teacher, and I talked with my students uh, about, you know, what's the future look like? What, does, what, what do your future job outlooks look like? And they're interested in things that really don't involve the Havelmex, of course, because it's not really a thing you can do for work, right? And so I still keep in touch with my friends from trade and industry, and I, I kind of get this vibe from them that they really struggle to find young workers who are interested in the trade and industry type jobs. Uh, Mike Rowe, with the Mike Rowe Foundation, he was the host of Discovery Channel's Dirty Jobs. Mike Rowe has done a great job of trying to get young students excited about trade and industry and about skills jobs like being a mechanic, uh, an engineer, an electrician, a plumber. And so I was trying to think, uh, as I was teaching with my students, how, how can I help with this? How can I get them excited about the things that, that get me excited? And then one day it hit me. I was watching a video on YouTube. This is a company called Megabots. They are an Oakland, California-based company that developed a prototype. This is called their MK2. They showed this off at the Maker Fair in San Francisco last year. It is a 15-foot tall, 12,000-pound robot. It can fire three-pound paintball projectiles. Very cool. In the cockpit, there are two human pilots. You can see Matt. Uh, as the front gunner pilot, and then behind him, who you, whom you can't see, is his partner, uh, Guy uh, Brindley, is sitting down there on the ground behind them. Cool guys, mechanical engineers, decided to start a company. Battling this, this battle mech against another one that was built and developed in Japan, they also used a Kickstarter campaign to generate over $500,000 to help upgrade their mech to battle the mech in Japan. That's going to be happening hopefully later this year. So I also had recently been to a screening of a film or a documentary called Most Likely to Succeed. This documentary is about a teaching method called project-based learning, or what we call PBL. Project-based learning occurs when two different disciplines, it's a multidisciplinary approach between maybe a math class and an English class, or an English class and a physics class. And in this type of a teaching method, the, the instructors work together to sit down with students uh, working on a hands-based project to help them accomplish course objectives. I also, as a teacher, try to teach the important skill, a skill that many students struggle with called synthesis, which is the creation of a new idea from the convergence of two existing ideas. So I synthesized project-based learning with battle mechs and I realized that everything that I had done in my life up to this point had prepared me for one thing, to build a full life functioning battle mech. And I knew that if I did this in such a way that I could involve the college and students, that I could get students excited about what we've already heard at this conference is something really cool, and that's STEAM instead of STEM, science, technology, engineering, the arts and math. And so with the help of a forward-thinking college president and four other faculty advisors and administration at the College of Southern Idaho who welcome innovation and good ideas, we started a new student organization called CSI Mech Tech, and this is what we're building. We call it the CSI Eagle Mech. It's based upon our mascot, which is a golden eagle. The cool thing about the CSI Eagle Mech, it's a track-based mech. It has a rotating uh, cockpit. It has interchangeable weapons on the arms. Uh, the cockpit actually is unique in our design in that two pilots will climb up a ramp and get into the cockpit. Once securing themselves into their seat, the cockpit will raise into position using mechanical hydraulic control and then it pivots 360 degrees on a hydraulic turntable. So we're really excited about the CSI Eagle Mech and its potential to involve students in things that they've never done before. So CSI Mech Tech is comprised of students from multiple departments and programs at the College of Southern Idaho. 
The exciting thing about CSI MechTech is that many of these students have never worked with each other cross-departmentally on a, on a project of this scale. So CSI Mech Tech is comprised of students in the engineering department who work on an engineering and design team, which is headed by a faculty advisor, two faculty advisors actually, one with a, an electrical degree in engineering, or a degree in electrical engineering, and another with a mechanical degree, a mechanical engineering degree. Uh, they have to coordinate their design efforts with a fabrication and machining team who is who acts as part of the uh, manufacturing technology department at CSI, and that team has a faculty advisor. Each of these teams have a student team leader that work with the faculty advisor as an executive team and coordinate the efforts of these different departments that have never really worked together before. We also have a business management team, and we also have a power systems team from the diesel technology department that work on the diesel engine that's going to go in this thing and also the hydraulic systems that will power it. The beauty of the CSI Eagle mech is that as a mech and as a project, it requires the skills and integration of people with multiple specialties. So we have four different kind of focus areas right now, but imagine the possibilities. We need welders. We have one welder, a student welder on our team. You need IT professionals for automation and control. Uh, it involves robotics, it involves engineering design, it involves design and 3D AutoCAD software. We use SolidWorks. It also involves artists for art conceptual design. It also involves a lot of management skills, marketing skills, promotion, uh, ad copy, English students who can write ad copy for us. And it also uh, involves you know, this larger management aspect for getting sponsorships to try to fund something like this. So <clears throat> imagine the future of education. I have hope for the future of education, specifically if it looks like CSI Mech Tech building Battle Mechs. <sighs> for that reason, I started a nonprofit organization called Mad Mech Tech. And the goal of Mad Mech Tech is to take what we're doing at CSI to other organizations and other schools who have expressed interest in participating into something that we're doing. The cool thing about a, a Battle Mech is it's scalable. The, and it's sustainable. So we have, in this 3D model, only scratched the surface of all of the ideas and concepts that the students have come up with. They want to put on, you know, mini jet packs. They want to do all of these different, they want to do shoulder rockets. They want to do different types of weapon systems. They want to do an all-terrain track-based system. The project's sustainable. And the key part is that it gets students excited about trade and industry and STEAM. So, my students and I will be building and fabricating an actual 20-foot tall, 20,000-pound mech this summer and into the fall and spring semester. Consider joining us and let's utilize the power of project-based learning with cool, awesome projects like battle mechs to revolutionize the future of education. Thank you.